Hey guys, it's me, Giselle, and today I'm going to share with you my thoughts on this bike. Faded in the city with my team Smoking, drinking, doing our own thing Yeah, uh, uh, she hit the post, a chap Yeah, stack bundles Yeah, we certify HUD Yeah, we certify HUD star Based on the spec sheet, this bike has a displacement of 144cc. Engine is air cooled, 4 stroke, and carbureted. Two valves is OHC and is mated to a 5 speed training. A bore and stroke of 58 by 54.4 mm, respectively. Power mill produces 10.3 horses and 10 Nm of torque. Not that impressive for a 150cc bike though. It has a high tensile steel chassis. It also has a steel tank with a capacity of 7 liters. This bike weighs 113 kilograms wet. And when you say wet, that means a full tank of gas along with your engine oil and so on. It has a push start button. And it also has a Kickstarter. Show a suspension for both front and rear. Suspension has been set up on the softer side, just what we all expect on a dirt bike. It has a decent stopping power on it too, thanks to the Nissan disc brakes. Double piston on the front and single on the rear. Seat height is at 830 millimeters. Such a tall bike for riders 5 foot 7 and below. And here's for your reference. I'm 5 foot 5 tall and as you can see I'm on my tiptoes. I also had a hard time mounting the bike on a flat surface. Anyways, you can lower the bike if you want to. You can mess up with its tires and its shocks. Power delivery of the engine is linear. It has a kind of grant ideal for off-road and steep hill climbing. And yes, this thing vibrates. Vibrations can be felt all over your body from mid to top end of the rev range. One of my concerns on this bike is the fifth gear being too short. I always end up shifting asking for a sixth gear. You don't need a sixth gear on a two valve 150cc engine though, it's useless. All I ask is maybe they could make the fifth gear a little bit taller, you know making it for highway cruisers a little friendly. The other concern is its price tag. Damn, this bike costs around 125,000 to 130,000 flipping peso, and I think that is too much for what this bike could offer. For that price, they could have made the engine um, liquid cooled and fuel injected. They could have also made the console somehow digital. Come on, look at this. This dash doesn't look like a 130 grand bike. They could have priced this bike at around 85 to 95k. So that's my take on the 2017 KLX 150 guys. If you find the video helpful, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Take care and God bless. Yeah, uh, 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 uh